Double stops, who loves them? I certainly don't. In today's video, I will give you a powerful tool how to level up your double stops on the cello. Double stops are one of the most important techniques on the cello, so it's very important that you dominate them. Most of you are probably having trouble when playing double stops, and don't worry, you're not alone. I have also sometimes problems with it. That means intonation, your left hand gets tired, it gets messy, the sound gets scratchy, whatever and so on. But with the tool that I will give you and with your patience, you will play double stops as never before. And near the end of the video, I will give you a bonus tip for double stops that will take your cello playing to the next level. First of all, before even starting exploring about double stops, it's very important that you dominate your instrument, that you map the fingerboard. In other words, knowing where all the notes are. Second, if you're a beginner, don't even start with it because you need a strong left hand. Your left hand needs to be developed with etudes, scales and so on. Your teacher is going to give you double stops on the right timing because if you're going to explore double stops before you actually have to, you're going to get injured and oops, that's not good. Besides, you will lose time, you will be frustrated and when you're frustrated, then yeah, game over. But okay, let's say that your teacher is saying like, hey, you're ready to play double stops. So now what comes next? Here in this case, I like to use one powerful weapon. If you are familiar with my videos, with my work, with my way of teaching, then you know what I'm going to talk about. If not, let me spoil it for you. Your best weapon is your ear or your ears in this case. This seems so simple to use, but trust me, the majority among you are not using your ears when playing. You know, when you're playing stuff, you just go through, you just rush through the pieces and you don't really use your ears. You know, they simply go through even when playing out of tune. But okay, sometimes that has to do because we're dealing with two notes and ones, which, you know, it can create confusion and then it's difficult. So what do I do to train my ears and the finger placement? I practice the double stops separately. Now, we're gonna take an example from whatever piece I've been playing for a while, just the first two measures, like the whole thing with the double stops, and then I will break things down in smaller sections. <laughs> So that was the Cadenza by Maurice Gendron of Haydn's second cello concerto in D major. It's a mind-blowing cadenza, but extremely difficult. Okay, so how I'm gonna deal with this passage over here. So we have the double stop. But I'm gonna hold my left hand as I would play the double stop. So on both the strings, the left hand will hold on both the strings. But with my right hand, I will play only on one string. So in this case, we're gonna start with the lower voice. So if this is the chord, so F sharp D, I like to start first with the lower one. So in this case, the F sharp. And then I play the passage. And did you see how I was holding? the other fingers on the A string. So that creates, anyways, strength in your fingers, but you're focusing much better on the intonation. You can do this on the opposite string as well. So we had the F sharp and the D. Now we're gonna do it with the D, so with the pinky. This is more difficult because it's with the pinky and the pinky is the weakest finger of, you know, of our hand. Okay, it's not a hundred percent perfectly in tune, but this is just a way how I want you to show how to practice. You can apply this in scales as well. So if you're playing a C major scale, let's get simple, right? So, so thirds, you can do like this. So you're holding your hand as a double stop, but you play only the, the lower one. Then you do the opposite. So we get the open string. It's 
challenging because it's more exposed. See? Missed it. So I'm gonna practice that one again. Okay, that was better, but that might be luck, so let me do it again. Okay, good. And so on. Another thing that I want to tell you, if, let's say, you screwed up one note and then you fix it, if you did it once and you're happy with it, that doesn't mean that your problem is fixed, so don't get happy too fast. Practice it enough so that it gets really familiar, so that you really know where each finger has to go. So anyways, I showed you a little bit the way how I approach this in the cadenza, in the scale. You can approach this in any piece of music where you face double stops. So going back into the um, scale, right? So we did it um, first on the lower string and then we did it on the higher string. Okay, fine. Let's say that we're familiar with the distances, with the intervals and so on. Now we can try to connect them, but still not playing as a double stop. I like to do like this. So I play first the lower note, then the upper note, and then I connect them. Lower, upper, Then afterwards, you can try it uh, already with the double stops. So by doing this step by step, as I am assigning you, believe me, your fingers are gonna be so much stronger and your finger placement, you know, uh, the fingers are gonna know where to be placed. So that's just good stuff, good news. So please do it. Now, for those that are still here with me, I have here a little bonus tip for you that can make, you know, your double stops either, you know, terrible or nice. So here comes the bonus tip. What is the right pressure of the right hand of the bow that we need to put on the strings? So don't press too hard on the strings. <laughs> as this can create a very scratchy sound and it will heavily affect your intonation. So, because here is what happens. So even if your finger placement is on the right position, so you're playing in tune, uh, perfect, but I'm using the right pressure or the right way or whatever. But if you scratch now, listen to the difference. Uh, that's normal. And now scratch, yeah. See how it goes, the waves. So it doesn't have any stability. It just goes like this, you know, like waves and the intonation is completely unstable. It's like you're walking on eggs. So anyway, it would be useful, you know, to do open strings, you know, with a bow, bow of the strings and find the right pressure, weight, I don't know how you would name it. So avoid this. because then never, you're never gonna have double stops in tune. In general, for intonation, I like to practice intonation softly without vibrato. So take a piano, piano dynamic without vibrato, and as I told you before, use your best weapon as a musician, your ears. So that was it for today's lesson. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And also I put a lot of work into my videos in order to make your cello playing going to the next level and in general to make your cello journey pleasant and nicer. So it would mean the world to me if you would hit that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so you will never miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Let's get these double stops right and I'll see you in the next video.